I'm here today to talk to two-time Olympic rowing champion Helen Glover as part of the InBioGlan Balance Series. Helen has won practically every rowing medal under the sun. She also became the first mother to row for Great Britain at the Summer Olympics in Tokyo. Talk about multitasking. I'm going to find out how Helen manages to find balance. Helen, how has your training changed since Tokyo? I guess since Tokyo, um, I took a step back and mm -hmm. coming into a world where we're not in lockdown anymore. And it's the first time I've experienced that after an Olympics. And mm -hmm. um, just kind of, it was nice. It was really refreshing um, having young kids and being able to go out again more normally and do the things that I always thought I would do mm -hmm. with them. Exercising for wellness and enjoyment and health mm -hmm. rather than it just being my job. Right. Oh, hello. Wow, <laughs> hello. So you've got this on your doorstep. In terms of balance, is this your, your go-to place to come out here, maybe bring the kids out, go on the paddleboard? Yeah, I love the water. Yeah. Well, I grew up in Cornwall and I was by the sea and so um, sea, lakes, rivers, um, is where I feel really at home. And um, mm -hmm. now, especially if I'm not thinking so much about hardcore exercise, yeah. it's really nice to like notice the little uh -huh. ducklings floating by and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. You. you are, you know, an incredible role model for your children. And I think, what advice would you give to anybody who's maybe struggling to, to get out there and do some exercise, especially as for, for parents who want to set a good example for their children as well. Yeah. Is there any advice that you have? I mean, I say the first there? thing is don't beat yourself up because I, like you say, it's my job, my profession mm -hmm. and my passion, yet there are days that I'm not motivated. Really? So, yeah, and so I think it really surprises people to think that you can feel self-conscious. I feel self-conscious going into a gym sometimes. I feel confused about what training I should be doing. I don't want to get up and train every day. And I think it's really nice to know that everybody goes through that. And if you're feeling that yourself, it's so normal. And the way you can get out of that is just by setting yourself small goals and thinking, mm. even if I just get outside, um, get the kids in the buggy or on my backpack, anything in the fresh air is automatically a good day and a good move to make. I think you, you never have to travel too far to get to something really cool, but you never have to look too far outside your front door to find something that's just your own, just yeah. yours, and um, whether it's a garden, a patio, or a windowsill, yeah. to make it your own, I think is equally special. Right, should we have another go? Let's do it. So Helen, what, does your, or what did your training look like in the build up to Tokyo? Totally different to the way it looked before London and Rio, mm -hmm. where I was on the team training full time in the training base. This time it was with a 17 month old and newborn twins. And yeah, I just kind of, I never really ever thought I'd go back to another Olympic Games. I had four years out of the sport. And then when we went into lockdown, I just started to, when, when the twins had their nap, I would just get on the rowing machine. It was the only fitness equipment we had in the house and sort of started to get this feeling of, well, we're in this situation for a while. Mm -hmm. The Olympics has been moved back and I just sort of started to think, what if I could do it? And what if I could do it from my living room as a mum mm -hmm. and show my children something really cool? It just sparked up an enthusiasm, I think. Uh -huh. And I think when I was in a time where I really needed and wanted something, there's not much known about women post birth because mm. it's, it's such a unique situation. Somebody has to answer the questions. And I thought, even if I don't make it, I didn't think I would make it to the Olympics, mm. then the next woman who tries, will have, I'll have got that little bit further down the path for her. Yeah. And now I definitely feel that way. I feel like the next person who tries, who wants to come back after children, I'll be able to kind of answer a few more questions for them. And in terms of um, like nutrition, how has your nutrition changed maybe since you were competing at the Olympics? And you know, are there any supplements that you use that help you with that? I've probably become a bit more mature about my own nutrition when I, yeah. when I first started rowing and I was in my 20s. When I was breastfeeding the twins, I actually got a, a rib stress fracture from not having the right amount of iron. Mm. And so things like that, I've just learned actually it, it, it does make a huge, huge difference mm -hmm. taking the right multivitamins, the right supplements, and then being just easy. Mm -hmm. I know for, for me, if I have to think too much about something, I may not do it. I'm yeah. not organized <laughs> enough, to be honest. <laughs> so something quick and easy, mm -hmm. it makes a difference from performance to injuries as well. Yeah. All right, Helen, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Um, I actually think I'm at your standard now. So I think we'll have a race back down to there, shall we? Oh, you're on. All right. <laughs> has convinced me of the benefits of spending time outdoors. 
Not only does being outdoors give you the obvious health benefits, but it also allows you to clear your mind and have a fresh new perspective on things. I can really see how this gives Helen the balance she needs. Can somebody chuck me a towel, please? <laughs>